everybody, it's me, Nate, aka Devil Dog, and I'm back. This time I am going to be doing a retro game review that was requested from one of my subscribers. So this is a big shout out to you know who it is. I will be doing a review of the classic Nintendo game, Willow. That's right, Willow. Yeah, I'm going to be torturing myself. <laughs> While I'm at it, maybe I'll do Fester's Quest next. All right, let's go ahead and put this old game in the Nintendo and see if it actually still works. Oh, how about that? Hello everybody, first of all I want to give a big shout out to Throwback Gaming. It was their recommendation that I should actually go and do a review on this game, so because of them is why I'm doing it. This is Willow, the 1989 game that was based off of the $35 million 1988 movie that was directed by Ron Howard and written by George Lucas and starred Warwick Davis, this guy, as Willow and had Val Kilmer as Mad Marnigan. Now, if you look at Val Kilmer nowadays, I'd say you'd probably be better off to call him Fat Fartigan. Yeah, that's right. You know, all in all, it's actually a pretty damn decent game. Now, as you play through it, you'll realize it'll take you roughly about around 10 hours if you actually take your time with it, but you can speed run through it in about two hours or less. It is a single player action role playing game uh, developed and published by Capcom and uh, plays very similar to uh, the classic Legend of Z uh, Zelda series or the the Legend of Mana. It also kind of reminded me of Crystallis in a lot of different ways uh, just because of the way the battle uh, movement is. I mean, when you're moving and you swing your sword, you kind of poke it straight ahead, similar to what Zelda does. I mean, Link does in The Legend of Zelda. My bad. But when you're standing still, you swing the sword in an arc. Uh, now, another uh, thing I did kind of notice, which was kind of annoying with this game, other than the fact of the, the way the world layout is, they'll tell you to go, like, north, and you'll try to go north, you'll end up getting lost and shit so the you know the directions and the way the map structure is it can lead to actually getting confused and getting lost kind of easy it does have a continue and a password feature uh, mainly because if you want to use the password that's great I recommend just going through and continuing but it does have this thing if you die uh, you will lose your current state and uh, re go back to your previous one now what I mean by that let's just say you're at level 2 and you need 300 experience to get to level 3 and you get killed at like 298 well you'll go back to 150 and you'll be warped back to your uh, most current town that you went to at the last area now one way that's kind of cool but another it kind of sucks I mean if you're like super close to the next level and you get killed that can kind of be annoying but once you get used to it it's really not that bad and like I said as you play through this game you'll get different weapons um, and abilities and different uh, you know your swords and, and what I mean by abilities is basically different magic spells but I'll get to them in a minute now you'll get your different swords the heavier the swords normally are more powerful but they're slower to swing now as you progress through you actually level up and get quote stronger enough to where you'll swing the swords a little bit easier especially with the item you'll find early on in the first game that will increase your strength and you also get you also get shields but most of the time the shields don't really seem to fundamentally serve a good purpose until later on as well once you get strong enough shields they'll actually reflect the enemy's attacks from you which actually uh, does make a big difference especially later on uh, now also the enemies do respawn in each area so basically the best way to beat this game is to farm them is go to an area where you like certain enemies that you see kill them move off screen move back and the enemies will constantly respawn allowing you the ability to go and farm them to level up the maximum level you can reach in this game is level 15 uh, but you can successfully rather easily beat the final bosses around level 13 now as you go through the early parts of the games as you go through the dungeons and you, you defeat different bosses which do give you a rather good amount of experience but it's still not that much experience you'll realize you'll have to backtrack all the way out of the dungeons to get out of them now later on um, in the game you will receive an item that will allow you to warp out of the dungeon so you don't have to backtrack but be careful when you first start out you will have to backtrack completely out of the dungeons to get out and there was one point where I beat the boss I was super 
happy. I went out and I wasn't paying attention and I had a damn skeleton kill me. Those skeletons are a pain in the ass. When you play this, you'll know what I mean. Uh, you will have to grind the level up because most of the experience that you get from the lower level enemies isn't really that much. And that's really kind of how it takes a lot of time. If you want to take 10 hours in this game, it's mostly if you want to level up. Now, once you get far enough along and you will rescue like a dragon named Poe, uh, which is the equivalent of the fast travel system in this game. You use your ocarina that you will get to actually call on the Poe wherever you want, and he'll actually show up in a cutscene and uh, take you to pretty much any previous area that you've already been. Um, now, one thing I did notice about this game that is kind of interesting is uh, there are some times that enemies will be off an area where you can't reach and kill them, which can be kind of friggin' annoying as shit. I mean, you'll have like an enemy, and let's just say you just want to kill them, you know, just for the experience, and then it'll be hovering out an area like a bug or a beetle, and you can't get to them, which really kind of sucks, and there are some other enemies that are best just to, to avoid downright. Uh, there's uh, the one guy that'll turn you into like a pig. Uh, you can't really even hurt him. The best way to do is just run from him and dodge his bubbles that he throws after you after he turns you into a pig, and that's kind of annoying. You know, I hated that part, and uh, I think damn near the final boss is a joke, but right before him, uh, that guy right there, he's a pain in the ass. He's annoying as shit. You want to avoid that guy at all costs. When you see them, just run from them. Trust me. Now, um, as you go through, I will notice this. Um, some interesting things here and there with design issues but for the most part they stayed very true to uh, the plot behind the movie. There were certain parts in it that they did change or remove based on the fact that it is a video game you know with some of the enemies and such but for the most part they did a damn decent job staying true to the movie's plot. You do come across just about every character in the movie and um, all in all you know some of them don't really play major roles they're just in the game just to be there uh, but they do change some things around but you know all in all and the graphics for a Nintendo game are really damn good the only thing that I found is really annoying and you might want to mute it is the music uh, it sounds great at first but after you realize that there's only one overworld theme you listen to repeatedly and it resets every time you kill enemies uh, other than a couple different boss battle tunes fundamentally you're going to be listening to the same three to four songs so that that can be rather annoying but one pleasant surprise I have to say with this game uh, other than the fact uh, as you progress you get different weapons uh, the magic is pointless really other than the final magic you get which I didn't even use the magic is utterly pointless but all in all it, it was damn fun I liked it and it had a very decent ending it actually had a ending where they actually took the time out to actually show you a true ending and for a Nintendo game that's pretty special so this is Nate aka Devil Dog I want to say a big shout out to Throwback Gaming for recommending this video game to do a review on and remember people have fun play hard and the devil is in the detail it's not too many times around when I can actually recommend a Nintendo game to play. Some of the earlier ones were a nightmare. This one was actually fun. I definitely want to give a shout out to Throwback Gaming for his recommendation to play Willow. And if anybody else would like to see me do any reviews on any other Nintendo games, please leave, uh, please leave me a message below on what game you'd like to see me do next. Uh, but of course, I've always got to end my video by sending this cartridge back to where it came from. Thank <laughs> you.